Hey guys, I wanted to kind of go through a little bit of building a call sheet. You know, we're going to have a whole section in the Offensive Coordinator Academy that's going to be dealing with different ways to do this. And there's a lot of different ways really to, you know, to slice, slice up this idea of building a call sheet. Some guys have, you know, the napkin and some guys have the menu they hold up and can't see them. And it's just different ways different guys operate. So I want to show a real quick video of what I did this week, or I'm sorry, this year uh, during a game week. This was on a, I think I filmed myself on a Saturday. It's a real quick five minute video. I'll let you guys kind of watch it and then talk a little bit about what's in the workbook, kind of working forward uh, uh, as far as building a call sheet is concerned. Wanted to kind of go through a few things that I'll do during a weekend to break down an opponent. I know a lot of coaches are in search of different things to do, and, and by all means, we all have our own different way of doing this. We don't think this is the end all be all way, but this is some of the ways that I'll prepare to play an upcoming opponent. Uh, so this is Sunday afternoon. I've broken down the film of who we're playing, I've broken down the film of our own game. And this is our kind of scouting report we're going to give to our team. Um, so here's what we look for here, what I look for to come to this point. First thing we do is I look for um, the team this year. You know, are they, have they changed coaches? Do they have a new as a coordinator? Do they have a new head coach? Do they have a drastically different personnel group? In the case of this Friday night coming up, the answer is no. Uh, it looks like the same defense. The same kids, the same head coach, actually multiple kids returning. So the next step for me is to go back and watch the film last year. So we all may not have this, but you will in the future. Um, so I'm going to look at how did they play us last year? Uh, what are some of the ways they lined up to us? Then look at some of the base rules of their defense. With us running kind of a unique offense, uh, we get crazy looks. So the way we're going to uh, kind of enact this next week is this is what our kids are going to see Monday. This is what our kids are going to see again on Wednesday. And then Tuesday kind of turns into it could be a different look. We may show them a 50 front. We may show them a different look that they might see so we're prepared for whatever is going to show up. And then Thursdays we're doing run through stuff. It's on what we consider to be the predicted front. You know what I think they're going to do. So the way we, I came to this, uh, we have two films on this opponent. Um, both films are playing a spread team. So it's not a great look at what we're going to do to us, but it does give a few looks. You know, most teams kind of have some general rules defensively, regardless of who they're playing. Uh, for instance, this team is trying to live in cover three. Uh, they'll play too high against spread teams, but they're going to roll down a safety I'm just labeling for our kids not some linebackers, so I don't blow their mind. Uh, but this kid is clearly the smaller of the two outside backers. He'll roll high, uh, which to me would indicate he could play safety against spread team, which he did on film. Then we look at uh, how they align when there's a tight end in the game, which we got this on the last year's film, but they did play a tight end, a team that ran a tight end. And it looked like they're giving a three and a six or nine to that side. They did flop their fronts. Uh, we got this off of last year's film. And then again, I've got the opponent that plays a little multiple. They're mainly spread, but they clearly had a smaller defensive end and a larger defensive end that we're going to move to strength. And so they have a strong side of the line and they have a quick side of the line. And I'll kind of go with the next chapter here of things that I want to do to attack uh, that look. So also, uh, two inside linebackers vary, are very stagnant players, which means they're not heavy blitzers, and they're pretty much going to align based on a predicted uh, front. And so they're going to be uh, pretty much the strong side is going to play almost a 20 or head up the guard, and the back side is going to play a little bit wider. And so that's how we kind of figure out how they're going to align. Again, what we saw on film kind of showed us this stuff. So it's not me predicting it. You can ignore my notes. I'm going to get into this later on. Okay, I'm going to pause it right there, guys, and kind of walk through a, little, a couple of things you may be seeing uh, on the video. Uh, one, you can tell, you know, we've kind of got plays that I like, and we change our play calls each year. I don't want to make this about what our plays are, but I do want to kind of go through, all right, we're going to build a call sheet 
The first thing we need to do is scout the defense. Uh, and we'll get into really heavy uh, detail of that inside the Offensive Coordinator Academy. It's something that you need to be doing as an offensive coordinator. I think I have spent time as a defensive coordinator, as an offensive coordinator, as a head coach. So I've kind of done all the different things you can do. And defensive coordinators kick offensive coordinators' rear ends on film study. So you need to understand uh, that as an offensive coordinator, that's something that can really help you. Uh, one, and this is what this whole video is talking about, it can give you kind of a predicted look uh, against base things you may do, regardless of the offense. If you run trips, most teams are going to have a pretty base trips adjust. There's an empty adjust, adjust to a tight end, adjust to kind of a four-man surface. You know, your flavor of offense might be different than mine. But most defenses have a base adjustment. Now, they're going to obviously game plan to stop you, but you can have an idea of what they're going to do based off of film. And like I mentioned in this video, especially if you've played them in the past, I think that's overlooked a lot of times as an offensive coordinator is that in the, we can go back and watch last year's film and confirm a lot of things that we saw. I prefer to watch last year's film first and then kind of confirm it as I go, but you could go either way on that as you're kind of getting to build a call sheet. Then you can see I got all my scribbles up here on my whiteboard. These are just different plays we like and predicted alignments. So I'll do the alignment, talk about the personnel like you, you heard me talking about, and then now plays that we like out of that set against that defense. That's kind of the start of a call sheet is, okay, these are the sets we like and the plays out of that set we like. And then you start looking at, okay, now guys, we want to pick on and ways we want to manipulate it. And you can see here just general notes for me, you know, what we want to look at doing. Again, this is not my offense, uh, specifically this one is, but to give you kind of an idea of, of how the process looks as you kind of build your own. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get out of this and into the workbook a little bit here. Um, Okay, so when you're building a call sheet, these are the things you want to look for. And again, this is going to be uh, inside the workbook. Um, this is how kind of an idea of what you need to look at. And then uh, templates or different ideas for you to, as you build your own call sheets. So call and plays is definitely probably one of the most difficult jobs, I think, in football. Other than being a head coach, being an offensive coordinator, this specific part of it is difficult. Um, you know, unless you're really, really talented or you have really, really good players, in which case it doesn't really matter. But calling plays is difficult. So here's some things we look at. We're going to call plays, at least on my call sheet. And it's a template you can use or, or there's a place here for you to kind of make your own. But we look, what we want to include on however we look at our call sheet needs to be situations. So what are the situations? What are kind of our third down plays we like? Maybe our shot plays we like? you know, uh, drive starters, I call them. Uh, you may have your red zone plays, two point plays, all those different situations. And I'll look at a few of them here in a minute. Then plays to get your guys the ball. You know, one of the things that we want to be very aware of is that uh, we can draw a great play up, but if it's our not as good player going against their best player, it's probably not a great play. You know, what can I do to get my best guy on maybe their worst guy and, and allow him to, operate in space, those plays tend to be a lot more successful. So plays for players, and then I have kind of backup game plans in there too. Right? What if those if-thens, if this guy gets hurt and then the backup quarterback's in, what are we, what are we going to do? Or if so-and-so's hurt and this guy has to move, then this guy moves to this position, what are our adjustments? And then to the right of it for me, or uh, and it can be wherever you want to put on your call sheet, we have basically, this is our, we're going to come out of the gates with these plays, kind of our opening script. I try to script the opening script a little bit in the second half, and then I like to do it by, by multiple drives. There's different ways to do this. Here's just a template that's in the workbook. Um, you can manipulate it and change it how you want to. But again, then you're, there you can see over there on the left, those are going to be our plays we want to call for situations. So two-minute drill, uh, down in distance, uh, man zero, we're backed up, play after turnover, all those different situations. What's our plan? In the middle, you're looking again at your for players. So how are we going to get our best player the ball? What about this position, that position? 
backup quarterbacks in the game? What about this personnel package we may have? What if we want to false key them or kind of have a trick play or shot plays or gimmick plays right in the middle? And then for me on the right, I put in like your script. Um, now I've done it multiple ways. Sometimes you do kind of our first 10 plays and it can be whatever order. Uh, for me, I've started going to the first three drives, basically two or three plays per drive to start us off. Uh, that allows me to work on who's rotating where and kind of know what's going in there. And again, inside of that, and we'll get into detail on this inside the academy a little more, is we're trying to gain information as well as move the ball. I like to have that little player spot there too, so I can kind of chart. You know, I've gone through games before as an offensive coordinator and our best player didn't touch the ball enough or a guy we wanted to make sure touch the ball didn't touch the ball enough. Having that on there in those first 10 plays or so, I know I'm going to run. Plus, I do the second half, and then I do other plays. So you end up with about 20 plays there. I want to see that guy's name pop up. So I know, okay, we're getting this guy going. That was one of our goals. Then I have a general note section down there where I'll put in whatever, and I like to leave that bottom part blank so I can kind of fill in as the game goes on. And then because I, I have been a head coach, I always like to have that time chart. How much time can we kill? When do we need to go for two? And kind of have that stuff ready. So that's basically what we have. And then there'll be, you know, obviously uh, for every coach, you need to build your own. So that this might not be exactly how you like it, but you like parts of this. Well, this will be a movable template. You can do things with it or just come up with your own uh, based off of some kind of ideas from it. You know, hopefully that'll kind of get you going, but, but uh, preparing to play an opponent and building a call sheet will help you. Now, I've done this a long time. So for me, a lot of times this call sheet ends up in my uh, back pocket during the game where I'm not really even using it, you know, for say. And so people kind of go, well, why do you do a call sheet if you're not going to use it? To me, uh, going through the process, which is what this whole academy is for and the workbook is for, allows you to kind of get to the point where maybe you even memorize it. And for me, that's what happens a lot is I'll pull it out every now and then to kind of refresh things. But a lot of times I've worked through that process now where I know who we're trying to attack, what sets we're gonna use, what we're trying to do. And I don't need the call sheet on, on the game, but I, I have it to prepare myself leading into the game. And there's a lot of review time with that for me. Um, during the week of practice and of course I try to put mine together a lot of it is put together on Sunday uh, but and the script is usually put together on Tuesday after practice and that way we can review it and see what we like on Wednesday and then on Thursday of course make sure we're ready to go play a game.